six tournaments, round three, some key games. Uh, okay. The first game, I think, which is interesting from round three uh, to check out uh, this the week. Game, I think, which is oh, interesting from round three. It's also a stream issue, actually. Uh, to check out uh, this week. I think it's a stream issue. Okay, should be better. So, um, pardon me. So, yeah, I want to check out uh, uh, Bogo against Mikhail Botvinnik, Bogolozhabov against Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, let's check this game. So, I'll call him FM from now on. Uh, so, Mikhail Botvinnik playing black. Uh, we see d4 from FM, knight f6 from Mikhail. Right, a three, a very solid move. And the response here from Mikhail is just to play b6. So this is a solid response. Black is trying to just strengthen the light square control by finchetting uh, this bishop across that diagonal, control that e4 square. White plays e3. And uh, I have some uh, access to Alakine's notes here as well. I don't think they're. Um, uh, I think um, I think they're pretty good good notes, and uh, he indicated off to e3 more usual and strategically safer. He indicates is c4 here, not e3. This looks a little bit on the passive side to play e3, blocking in uh, this bishop. Okay. Um, right. So we see c5. And now uh, FM reacts with C4, Bishop B7. So black is uh, putting more pressure on that central E4 square. White plays now Knight C3. And uh, we see now C takes D4, E takes D4 and just E6. So potentially black might be interested in pinning this knight to exert more influence on this e4 square. Bishop d3, but actually no, we see actually instead bishop e7. And now both sides castle. So Mikhail Popovnik's played sensibly. He's deployed this queen's bishop across the diagonal. Uh, this bishop has been kind of liberated because black did that capture cd. In exchange for that though, black's got access to the c file. Uh, as a target, but this bishop could be a nuisance. It can uh, use this diagonal potentially. But in fact, um, White wants to support now the c4 pawn, b3, and this comes under some criticism from Alexander Alakine in the notes. Uh, with this move, which weakens the queen side, Alakine writes, without any necessity. And the next one, White completely spoils his position, which would have been promising enough. If bishop f4 had been played, uh, so Alakine doesn't like this move b3. Uh, Popovnik reacts with d5, and now we see bishop e3. And um, okay, has White made any serious errors? Well, the thing is, uh, Mikhail Popovnik plays uh, very aggressively now. Uh, he actually uh, heads uh, an attack now kind of formation with his knight on e4. This this whole thing about supporting and putting pressure on e4 is now an outpost knight e4, which in this particular position is quite a nuisance. Okay, so we see rook c1, knight d7, and uh, now queen e2. Which again, Alakine doesn't really rate uh, that much, indicating the aim of this move is difficult to understand uh, because of the uh, already inferior position. He should try and simplify matters. Uh, so, Alakine actually recommended instead of Queen e2 to play the move Knight e5 here uh, to try and simplify. Interesting. Um, okay, so. It's, it is a difficult position. So this bishop e3 was played. 
So we see knight e4 after rook c1, knight e7, queen e2. Um, and now rook c8. There is pressure on c4. White plays now rook fd1. And here, here it begins. The purpose of, of moving knight e4, now this f pawn can support it. And ordinarily, uh, this might be creating uh, you know these dark square weaknesses but um it depends is black able to cover up this e5 uh, weakness and you might think white has a positional resource here to sort of contest the e5 square which he uses white plays actually bishop f4 but Mikhail uh, plays a dynamic uh, aggressive move uh, now and it's a forcing move and I wonder how many of you would consider it. Uh, it's um, a little bit, I, sp I guess, unusual looking, but it's kind of positionally motivated. Uh, if I gave you 20 seconds here, can anyone guess what Mikhail Botnik played in this position? <clears throat> Anyone? If you want to take a guess, well, I'll carry on. So black to play here. There's this kind of battle over this e5 square and control on, on, the, on the dark squares generally. Uh, these dark squares generally. How does black um, fight the e5 square? Okay. Go go out 12 4 and play chess. Yes. G5. Very aggressive move. Forcing move. And it's dislodging, you know, both of these pieces now. Of the bishop e5, um, g4, and now look, this bishop's a bit of a target. It's going to lead to a weak pawn after knight e1. We have now a weak pawn. Knight takes e5. White tries bishop takes e4 here. It doesn't really help. Um, D takes e4, D takes e5. We just have a weak pawn on e5 now. Okay, the queen's attacked. It goes to c7. Um, and it looks as though we'll hold on a sec. Isn't knight b5 useful? Well, not really. e5 is dropping here. That's the key thing. Knight b5, queen takes e5. But then what about this rook invasion? This had to be factored in. The rook invasion is used, but now uh, this doesn't help. Um, in this position, uh, Mikhail Botvinnik uh, has a tactical idea. Bishop g5 just attacking this rook. So this this seemingly promising rook invasion on the seventh rank is being adequately parried at the moment. The rook moves, and now Bishop c6 encouraging uh, the rook to to just take on a7, which it does. But it's a little bit misplaced there, and now this central con contesting that central file is very important. And um, Alakine writes the occupation of this open file is absolutely decisive. Okay, so we we see here um, we're in a very very uh, difficult position. Uh, it's virtually lost, and this is the great you know Bogolodjibov F in Bogolodjibov. So A4. Black just takes on d1 and plays rook d8, supported by that bishop. Fd, queen c2, and um, now black plays a really crushing uh, final move, believe it or not, which encourages white to resign. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you 20 seconds starting from now. Can you guess? Anyone? <clears throat> okay, this crushing final move is Bishop D D two, and it actually encourages White to resign here. 
Uh, this knight's a, a real problem. If um, queen b1, for example, then Alcoin's notes indicate e3. There's a, there's a really crushing blow. Because if takes check, this is a really desperate king f1. And this bishop e4 will be totally and you know crushing here. Um, this is all over. It's pretty pretty nasty. If the queen moves here, I think we just um, take and there's all sorts. There's bishop g2 here, just winning the queen. So after bishop d2, uh, that was that was all over. Bishop d2, uh, end of game. So Bovnik really uh, crushed his opponent in this in this game. Let's really uh, let's check this out again. So Nottingham uh, round three, 1936, played on the 12th of August. Uh, let's run through the game again. Very simple play for Mikhail Botvinnik against this very solid knight f3. Just plays b6, and uh, Black still got a very aggressive intent. Black's plan that we saw in this game was kind of to overprotect this this central square uh, later, and then use it as a sort of attacking basis. Very aggressive attack. That's what we kind of witnessed. Uh, if we look at this again, so c takes d4. E6, uh, but later Black played for this knight e4. Uh, actually, Botvinnik's notes indicate here instead of bishop e3, knight e4 should really have been uh, tried to be prevented. Uh, so, for for example, queen e2 he gives. Um, if queen e2 had been played, then um, this this is okay uh, potentially. Um, but uh, d takes c4, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, rook takes d4, rook d1 uh, is is attacking the queen and a8. So it's possible that queen e2 was was playable here, and what we we got from this game was you know a very passive. Uh, position. Um, so this bishop e3 is um, bishop e3 is a very passive move because it's supported. You know, black black just put entrenched this knight centrally, and we saw that that you know white was really pushed off the board after this. If we just look again. Rook c1, and then f5 coming up. And it's, it's a sort of strategy which uh, I, I believe we've witnessed recently in in some of the games of Aronian to kind of turn uh, a seemingly solid position into a kind of improved uh, Dutch stonewall. So even in modern grandmasters, I think this style of play of entrenching a knight and having a kind of stonewall uh, kind of attack it's it's very very uh, dangerous. And it's and it's what I kind of, if you if you kind of, I think Mikhail Popovnik has kind of has this in his um, stylistic um, um, arsenal of weapons to get an entrenched knight on e4 and then sort of get this kind of stonewall type attack. And there's nothing really that wrong with Black's position. You can question the e5 square as White did, but it didn't really do anything because Black is prepared to bring this g pawn. Uh, down the board, so it's it's quite a cool uh, attacking strategy. I think we can make use of in our own games, um, and I think you know one of the Tartakov's quotes was to get an advanced knight on on e5 or e4, and the attack plays itself. This is maybe an example of of this strategy again, really. Uh, so White tries to you know find some dark square weakness, but he's just pushed back. It resulted in this weak pawn on e5. Uh, the interesting thing here, though, even though White contested that d file on this entry point, uh, you know, there's there's ta you know the tactical precision now comes in that Black can safely win uh, this pawn and allow this rook d7 because of this bishop g5 resource, and and Black's about to evict the rook off this d file, and this, this e1 knight is exposed. As a major weakness now, because Blacks can, you know, got that d file, 
and e1 is really uh, an exploitable weakness um i think black in this position actually this a4 is 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 um is looking um you know why was that played i think the position is already quite difficult actually um maybe something like uh he wanted to be able to play a takes b5 here if bishop takes b5 maybe uh, but a4 didn't help at all so black you know played very simply just taking on d1 and then rook d8 and it's just it's a very simple crushing game i wonder if uh, a strong impression has been made on anyone here about this game it just seems black played very very simply and you know he won that major center pawn he's crashing through with e3 now if white tries to protect the knight so i think i think that's a very nice stylistic example and shows you know botvinik's like ahead of his time really uh, with some of these uh, dynamic concepts and dynamic play you know like g5 g4 okay um let's go on to another game of the round now one of the great uh, positional players of the tournament uh, is is a player called Solomon Floor and he got to play Capablanca in round three so positional player against positional player so let's have a look Solomon played d4 and we see knight f6 from Capablanca and the classic Queen's Gambit declined type position this is really classic classic stuff so knight f3 and Capablanca kicks that bishop h6 it goes to h4 b6 Tartakawa system I believe b6 and uh, white plays c takes d5 here and black takes actually with the knight knight takes d5 trying to simplify further get rid of the dark square bishops Solomon do doesn't mind taking that so we see knight takes e7 bishop e2 bishop b7 white castle knight d7 and um, th this is uh, kind of interesting that uh, black has the pawn majority on this side of the board white plays this kind of uh, in some ways it's provocative but if white can get rid of the light square bishop then these holes might count more uh, for emphasis so this is quite an annoying move this queen a4 what does black want to do about things like bishop a6 well Capablanca tries to uh, seal things up with a6 we get rook fd1 knight d5 and white sensibly just carries on simple rook ac1 all simply played by white um now rook c8 the pawn shouldn't be taken here because otherwise it you know pin backfire um we see knight takes d5 e takes the <coughs> oh me ah uh, e takes d5 okay bishop d3 and i wonder how many of you would like to play uh the white position here at this point on move 16 do you think white has a small advantage in this position or not so what what are your assessments of this if i give you 20 seconds to evaluate uh the position would you like to have this with white basically uh, what do you reckon do you think this nice position okay well, okay let's see what uh, happens so black played c5 which seems quite um logical or does it is there a slight snag associated with c5 here because uh white took and okay from a stylistic point of view um is capablanca wanting hanging pawns here or does he want to accept the isolated queen's pawn um, if he played b, b takes c5 he didn't he actually played knight takes c5 funny enough 
and this this gives white the d4 square and we have this isolated queen's pawn and that's very interesting what what is going on here that um what's so bad about b takes c5 in this position does it fail tactically it looks as though black might be a little bit loose here uh, to say bishop f5 looks looks a little bit nasty on d7 uh, there might actually be other moves as well but uh, that that looks as though it could be unpleasant uh, but um, whatever the reason Capablanca in this game actually took uh, with the knight believe it or not and I, I have a feeling this isolated Queen's pawn isn't that hot in this position it's immediately blockaded with the Queen rook e8 and then this bishop f5 resource is, is used kicking the rook unless black wants to consider knight e6 of course but the rook moved queen f4 eyeing that rook tying down the black queen the rook goes to it's from c to e7 now the blockade is exchanged with the knight blockade so keeping the bishop blocked in by its own pawn and in this position again this seems to be um, a strange sort of decision which makes black's position a little bit more passive in some respects uh, I guess Capablanca had very good reason to, to consider this move he plays actually a5 and you might think well what about this b5 square isn't this good for white to use that b5 square what could white possibly uh, have been threatening here which is uh, so powerful well possibly Capablanca was concerned about b4 um, this c file and c7 um, is potentially promising so maybe it was it was designed against uh, b4 in particular that black plate a5 here but this kind of Achilles Hill has emerged there it's b5 square I think someone uh, like Solomon for he was very known for his quiet style positional style being able to exploit weaknesses uh, you know systematically he plays Bishop d3 offering knight for Bishop Capablanca is not interested but um, the downside is the bishop plonks itself immediately on b5, attacking a rook. Okay, the rook moves. And now we see queen f3. So this looks like um, a very nice position with blockade on the outside queen's pawn, uh, a piece in that hole on b5, um, more useful perhaps than that bishop. So I think you might agree that White has somehow increased his positional advantage against the great Capablanca here, who now plays an unusual looking, artificial looking attacking move. Capablanca plays Rook G5. White's kingside is very solid here. This attack seems a bit uh, optimistic, to say the least. We see actually Queen E2, and the rook pox itself on g6 and bishop comes back rook f6 bishop drops back altogether to b1 um, bishop a6 okay queen goes to h5 and white might be threatening potentially now knight f5 uh, that could be a dangerous threat here uh, with with d5 also potentially tactically under fire bishop b7 now a3 as though white's interested in playing b4 what's happened here is that these rooks this one in particular seems a little bit misplaced blacks though is black is concerned about b4 and tries to stop this with a4 uh, that is a slight compromise on the b4 square though so both these squares are now subtly kind of weaker than they were before we see Queen g4 
And now a concrete threat has emerged here. Knight f5 will attack e7 and threaten the mate. Rook e5 stops knight f5, knight f3. And it looks as though uh, Capablanca would welcome a repetition. Because we have this repetition here as though he's interested in a draw. But uh, Salmon Floor, he's a very, very good player. He kind of reject, rejects this um, repetition draw. He breaks the repetition now. He plays um, Queen G3. Okay, so Queen G3 uh, is still is still leaving the Queen kind of aggressively placed along this diagonal and G7, and you know it does support, for example, Knight E5 potentially as well. So it's not it's not completely bad on G3. Bishop A6. And we get here a period of, of kind of positional torture. The knight goes back to its fine blockade square, as though knight f5 might be threatened again. And now, of course, there's no rook e5 to defend against that. We see rook d7, bishop f5 now attacking the rook, and the bishop drops back. Okay, teasing black a little bit. And I don't know if this caused some annoyance that uh Cabobank has been toyed with here. You know, potentially he could go back to d7 and see if White's going to play bishop f5. Unless White's got something else up, up his sleeve here. Um, but um, things go quite bad now. This next move from Capablanca may, may be a product of some irritation with his position. But if you look at White's position, White does seem to almost dominate the position. Uh, in many many uh, respects, Kevin uh, Blank played Queen C8, and uh, th this is a real problem uh, now. After Knight F5, um, why is it a real problem? Well. It's threatening mate. Clear enough. It looks as though black can defend. So he plays rook g6, attacking the queen. But now a very uh, powerful move, unfortunately for black, exists in this position. I wonder if you can get it if I give you 20 seconds starting from now. So white to play here. Anyone? Okay. Um, no, it's not ninety seven. I think black can just take that on knight e7. It doesn't want to lose two pieces uh, for a rook. It's, it's nothing that amazingly uh, flashy. <laughs> and this is the problem actually with my over the board chess like last night sometimes. I'm looking for flashy moves. Well actually there's simple chess moves which don't carry risk. Uh, why would you want to risk giving two pieces for the rook? Why would you want to risk an exchange sack? There's something we really, really clean cut in this position with no controversy associated with it um, here. So can you find a non-controversial move which uh, extends White's advantage considerably in this position? So non-controversial. And to keep things non-controversial, sometimes you know simple is good, yeah. Um, I, talking about simple is good, you might consider queen e5. It doesn't really attack anything because g7 is protected. Um, okay, no, actually the move in this position. Okay, and no, no one's getting it here on stream. Um, maybe it was a little bit surprising. No, no one's getting it. 
no it's not Queen E5 a lot of you say Queen E5 I'm gonna to have to show you now just simply Knight D6 now Knight D6 attacks the Queen and it attacks the Rook and the Knight is protected from G3 and this spells big trouble for the great Capablanca here it really does it's so simple it's a double attack so we see rook takes g3 knight takes c8 and again another double attack the rook and b6 are attacked black is going to lose material Capablanca tries to make um, the best of it here uh, he can't actually go back here as well because we've got that covered he tries to make the best of it now with an, uh, an exchange sacrifice so he plays rook takes g2 it smacks with desperation he's already lost he's been positionally murdered by Salomon Floor uh, Salomon Floor was actually in Chernev's uh, he was featured in one or two games in one of my favorite books of all time by Chernev the most instructive games of chess ever played very very strong player and you know this was a really really strong tournament in many respects and this position can be considered totally lost here the exchange down this isn't sufficient compensation um, we'll look at the continuation but Capablanca has been systematically outplayed in this game so King takes G G2 Rook takes C8 Bishop A2 the exchange down basically um, he's he's playing now uh, Rook C6 okay he, he, he bypassed the obvious trap by the way if you had played rook takes d5 that's where I'm losing to bishop b7 okay so he bypassed that well not losing but playing uh, a significant advantage he carefully tries to win d5 which he does now check king h1 knight d3 okay there's some further uh, tactical ideas rook c2 protecting f2 rook d6 with if the bishop moved uh, without protecting then knight takes f2 Capablanca is playing for cheapos he's the exchange down still nothing's really changed he's still the exchange down as though knight takes f2 the bishop's protecting d1 rook f6 we see bishop e4 rook d6 uh, bishop takes d3 simplifying and this this pin okay with check is another like cheapo f3 stops that check keeping the pin and uh, Capablanca is faced now with rook d2 so he further simplifies the exchange down and he plays on a few more moves he does the king comes in f4 check f5 check uh, he plays h5 here e4 e5 and now he gets ready in this position he he resigns finally uh, in this position uh, black can't really avoid losing material here if black plays h3 then although we have bishop f1 to this I think maybe just just white plays king g6 uh, we're winning g7 so black uh, resigned here he was completely positionally outplayed so a dangerous positional player Salomon Floor um, who would like to should we have a quick recap what happened here um, this is kind of Tartago a Queen's Gambit decline territory um, so in in this variation likes playing this b6 and sometimes accepting hanging pawns uh, from an evolution of style perspective we see this variation turn up much later in 1972 Boris Spassky playing black against Fisher and we have hanging pawns in that game but here um, Capablanca is just accepting an isolated Queen's pawn at some point his pawns get kind of reconnected like this so that's c5 we can have that scenario of the hanging pawns um, but there's a specific reason which would be interesting to know exactly why after d takes uh, this this was played anyway 
it did seem to leave, leave black with a passive position to play knight takes c5. So we have an easy blockade on the d4 square. So I wonder if we just, just have a quick look at this particular position again. Um, do, you, do you think it's simply because of bishop f5 that this was avoided by Capablanca? I wonder. Um, bishop f5, I, I think must be the reason. Um, if you want to say anything about this, um, or, or please let me know later. But uh, we saw Capablanca just out, outplayed here with not being given much much counterplay at all. A fine positional game. He, he did weaken himself, maybe trying to discourage b4. So he's weakening the b5 square. And he, I think he just got annoyed as well that um, you know his position was starting to get harder to play because of the, the kind of rooks uh, slightly misplaced and kicked around annoyingly. Uh, so here, here was it. Here's the disaster. Queen c8. I guess black with queen c8 is threatening uh, knight e4 uh, potentially or something like that. Maybe not. No, maybe not. Not at all. c7. No, he's not even threatening knight e4. It just runs into knight f5 with this idea of threatening mate and then coming into d6. This, this is really uh, a crushing blow. So that just one material. There's, there's, how can black avoid uh, losing material here? Uh, so the rest of the game was, as we saw, was, was just consolidating uh, from being the exchange up. Black had very little compensation. Okay, so um, let's let's go on to another game. I hope uh, you got something from from that game. Um, okay, the third game I want to look at from round three. Uh, further than the last game uh, this week to look at from round three is this one. Uh, William Winter, a very dangerous British player um, who's got a reputation of beating um, Sultan Khan, the genius from India, quite a lot. There's something about William Winter's style of play. Um, by the way, that Capablanca loss was one of the very few losses he had in the Nottingham tournament. Uh, he did eventually do very well uh, to come second after Mikhail Botvinnik. So that loss we saw was very interesting and very unusual. This was one of the peak years of Capablanca's like uh, strength. Um, so anyway, William went to playing Milan Vidmar, another great player. So Vidmar. So. Some notes here by Alexander Alkine. We see d4 by William Winter. Okay, so d5, c4, e6. We have this very popular at the time, Queen's Gambit declined. Okay, bishop e7, knight f3, castles, rook c1, c6. White plays bishop d3. And black. Uh, tries to exchange off these bishops again, like in the game we just saw. He plays d takes, and now knight d5, trying to relieve the kind of pressure by offering the exchange of bishops. And this is taken. White castles. Now black takes on c3. Rook takes c3. Now e5. And black's trying to liberate this bishop, so it's got this fine diagonal to work with as well, potentially. Queen c2. Okay. Now here, um, in this position, black, uh, like in one of the earlier games we, we saw, black played e4, and he's trying to make this point here a strong point as a basis for attacking white on the king side. And in Alakine's notes, uh, he considers the alternative. If black had played e takes d4, e takes d4, Alakine considers this is not without danger for black. 
uh, this position. For example, knight f6, rook e1, queen d6, knight g5. That looks pretty crude. h6, knight takes, rook takes, queen b3, winning according to uh, Alekhine's notes. This is actually winning for white, as in the game Lionfish against Ruman, Moscow, 1935. Uh, so why would this be winning? Um, it looks like a pretty pretty bad pin. Initially, I'm just wondering about knight d5. Actually, um, I think there's a problem with c8 in this position. Uh, if knight d5, I think we can just um, take and go for the c8 bishop with with a check here. So th this is this is really dangerous. This check here. Um, there's rook f8. No, 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 no. Have I got this right? Is this winning? Knight d5. <laughs> Have I got the right position? Rook e8 here. Uh, there's rook f8. Uh, don't tell me I've got the notes wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, knight f6, rook e1, queen d6, knight g5. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, anyway. There were some notes about e takes d4, which I, I think I need to check out. Sorry about that. I might post it on YouTube if I find out the exact uh, vari uh, variation there. So um, black played e4 anyway, and he, ma he made a strong point of this square. So knight d6, knight f6, trying to hold this square, this pawn. a3, too slow according to Alekhine. Um Sorry, I want to find guns rook f3 after rook e8. Is that variation was that variation winning? I want to find um Rook F three after Rook E eight. Oh, let's just go back here for a sec. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm gonna stop looking at this. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, let's let's get on with the game. Okay. A3, too slow according to Alkine. The correct move, which to, for white to, to remain with the advantage, was bishop b3, uh, with the idea uh, that if bishop f5, then we have f4. Uh, that was Alkine's recommendation uh, in this position, instead of a3. Okay. Uh, we see bishop f5, so black's really you know getting a strong point here. Rook c1, rook a8, b4, and now h5. This looks dangerous for the king side. h5 is is mentioned by Alekhine as actually a good positional move. Not it's not just about hacking the king, but a good positional move, which would be useful. Uh, for example, uh, for instance, he says if white should be able to play uh, b5. Uh, then allowing a kingside attack um, with knight d5 and queen g5 later uh, would be possible. Uh, so we see f4 using that pin on the bishop, so no en passant here. g6, queen b3, rook d7 with the in the expectation of b5 here. So it's kind of welcoming this b5 resource. And Alakine gives this b5 as, as a question mark. It must be based on a miscalculation. A good move was in this position, apparently, according to Alakine, just putting the knight 
on f1 that would safeguard the king uh, but after after this move uh, b5 instead uh, what what we see is c5 now there's this loose knight c5 that's a bit of a problem whoops <laughs> uh, where is white's queen side attack um, and if, if d5 now then just this and there's a lot of pressure on that pawn I'll be dropping off so white plays here now queen a4 and this this is a complete collapse for white William it's not winter's greatest uh, hour here after c takes e takes he's got now a weak f4 pawn and d4 at the moment there's a tactical trap I think rook takes d4 we have this trap check and then we can take on d4 next but uh, black simply just uh, piles up the pressure on d4 and f4 so white's game he's had it he's losing a pawn here um, white protects d4 to offer f4 now all of white's pieces are concentrated without effect on the queen side and the king's position becomes very exposed Alcon writes about this game queen takes f4 okay he's won a key pawn there and you know black's got nasty crude frets there on h2 white takes on a7 it's pointless having the queen over here look at this king a meager satisfaction for the fight will be decided by the positional not material advantage so b6 attacking the queen like this rook c7 threatening knight d5 now using that pin we see rook g3 and now knight g4 from vidmar uh, putting more pressure on h2 now uh, this this is pretty nasty stuff and uh, white's under great pressure here and it I think it's a, it's a lost position it it looks it looks pretty bad white plays now bishop e2 and can you see the move which black played in this position uh, which is a game finisher if I give you 20 seconds starting from now so what is black play in this position okay yeah not h4 on h4 there's a weakness for the last move we can just play rook takes g4 here I think two pieces for a rook no much stronger knight takes h2 setting up a really nasty pin so that if takes then h4 is winning the rook winning exchange after the knight takes h2 white actually resigned uh, it is a double attack on both rooks now white resigned here so alakine writes a well played game by dr vidmar his doctor as well so um yeah yeah that that's that's one way of playing the queen's gambit declined as black so we see these strong pointing strategies of this especially this e4 square demonstrated i think this evening these old masters seem to get this grip in the center which kind of spearheaded their attack so here this grip on that e4 square uh later facilitated uh, a great attack on the king side this 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 position b5 was did seem really dodgy uh didn't really want black to be able to play c5 surely so knight f1 would have been so much better getting out of the way of c5 so this because then you know we've got bishop f7 if 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 b5 c5 we can take queen takes we've got bishop f7 on c5 so this this was a total disaster here to play the move b5 positionally uh because this loose knight unfortunately you know c5 and white has nothing it seems on the queen side after this 
Would you all agree with that? That this is this is pretty bad stuff now for white. Um, you know, this, the centers under pressure, it's, a, it's an unstable structure here. And it's just been undermined. Um, so it's it's logic it just falls to bits in the game now. So um, it doesn't fall for any trap, any cheap trap. White just he collapses, his king sides collapsed. It's interesting that black takes time actually um, to sort of uh, seal up the, the queen side. Uh, not not going straight in with knight g4 here or anything. Um, but getting you know getting this pin sorted out, this horrible pin like this, tying down uh, the bishop first, threatening a knight d5 here. Um, yeah I mean and if if white had doubled then I think black can probably double here still threatening knight d5 so this this pin is really just annoying uh, so the rook tried to get out of the way uh, so the bishop can just move but um, now now comes this attack this h pawn is so handy as an attacking resource actually for these h4s uh, so that that's something really crushing now knight takes h2 I think these games I chose these three games tonight I thought they were the nicest from round three uh, so I hope you got something from them and I'll, I'll upload this to YouTube so I uh, hope you got something from this week generally okay uh, thanks very much and have a good week so see you next week thanks very much